Ladies, gentlemen, everyone else, welcome back to our stream and our coverage here of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, round four in the season six of VLF1. Uh, we've had all of our qualifying. We've seen Charlie sweep everyone away in three qualifying sessions. In not a single session did he finish less than first place. Uh, Pyro, any uh, looking across the grid? Um, you, I, I want to ask you about your McLaren guys. How are you feeling about their chances, Macker and Wilder, in today's race? I don't want to jinx anything, <laughs> as I, I, I think I already jinxed them often enough when I wrote the Discord messages towards them. Um, and I certainly don't want to do that on stream right now. <laughs> um, okay, as so probably... inst instant DNF, bad strategy, nothing, zero points, <laughs> is what I'm saying. No. <laughs> no, that, also no. Um, I believe in them, I just well, don't want to say anything there. I just believe in my boys, points, finish, uh, that's all I'm going to say. Well, we don't know where drivers will finish yet, but we do know where they are going to start. So let's preview today's starting grid for the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix, round four. In pole position is Charlie, or Zydox as he's known. Sonny was his teammate for many races last season. Uh, he's his rival right now. That's a great front row. Dormin is absolutely parking it. He is nose bleeding with altitude, and he's next to Gaben, the second half of the Scandinavian squad in P4. Maka and Mancho are doing really well. Mancho with a significant improvement from Baku. Hopefully this is one of his better tracks. That's our third row. Sontha in P7, performing well. A bit low compared to his usual standards. He is the championship leader after all. Glenn with a great P Q3 performance and toe in P8. Monty got himself into Q3 and gave a really good account of himself. Two seconds off the pace in P9. Franklin with a few invalidations. Didn't do too well in Q3, but got there. P10. Hodgson decided to go have a burger or something in Q2, and as a result, <laughs> dropped out of the top 10. Uh, Blaze in P12 after letting Impress fall by the wayside in Q1. Got a really nice time on the board. Now and Wilder, two of our newer drivers, uh, dropping in Q2, but gave really good times. 130.1, 130.3. And finally, our 16-man grid is brought up at the rear by Envy and Impress. Impress dropping in Q1 and Envy not having the best of luck in Q2 with his Alfa Romeo boys. That is our grid for today. We're having our drivers sort of make final setups at the moment. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about is the, is the tyre strategy. So we've got a 25 lap race. We've got softs and mediums considered the optimal strategy. When you were driving Pyro, do you like to normally lead with the soft tyre and get some really good laps on the board? Or did you like to go with the medium tire and sort of save your power for later? Um, I always like to, to more start with the medium tire and then go into soft, just so I have to pace for later on in the race when everything is a little bit more spread apart and I can actually commit to the to the soft tire. Yeah, um, well said. It's a, a lot of our drivers, especially those that did well in Q2, it's the reward for starting on the mediums as we see our drivers get the formation lap underway. Testing out the tires, warming things up. Uh, we do get to see a little bit of the tire setup that the drivers have used. So our top ten are tire locked. So Charlie, Sunny, Dorman, Gaben, Mucker, and Somfer oh. in the top ten. Oh, oh my did god! Use the medium tire. As we see some DSQs already. This is beautiful. Uh, Mancho, Glenn, Monty, and Franklin. Rest of the top ten. Uh, had to use the soft tire to get through to Q3. Now, Pyro, we've got four DSQs. I have no idea what happened there, but um, I can imagine the, the game being like it is. Um, maybe Blaze uh, stopped for a moment. No touched him. Walder was also too close. Same for Envy, and then uh, as soon as you touch somebody, uh, they disqualify you. But that means they start on freezing cold tires. They have no grip whatsoever. And we have a little bit more advantages than and this uh, place as well as they're starting on soft, so they don't need uh, to uh, heat up the tires as much. But the medium runners, not really good for them either. Yeah, we've got, uh, it always sucks to see that uh, DSQ in a formation lap. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we've got uh, any follow-up issues or any game-wide issues to look at. <laughs> but for now, we're just going to see our drivers complete their formation laps. Uh, the predicted pit stop strategy, AWS powered, is on the screen. Uh, most of the time it will be medium soft. Uh, everyone on the grid has a medium or a soft tyre equipped, so can run with that perfect strategy. Starting with the hard tyre is underrated, but not really available for our boys inside the top 10. 
none of the guys on the back have chosen to do it. I had a look myself, it's about five seconds slower to run a hard, soft strategy and sort of get the early part of the race out of the way. I think the reason drivers aren't doing that is because of just the threat of safety cars and incidents. If we can have four DSQs on a formation lap, we're certainly going to see collisions going into the race proper and it really does not pay off to have a gamble of a tyre that will last 20 laps when you're having incidents maybe every two or three. Yeah, that's true. And also, maybe the grip is not that, that's good, for, especially to start where you need it, or else you will just land in a fucking wall. I, I'm, okay, wait, Don't wait, worry, wait, we'll, wait. we'll get one. You just took mine. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, driver settling back into position, just uh, ghosting through the four cars that were put there. It's going to be really fun to see this turn one, two complex. It's a chicane, it's at low speed. The breaking point's going to be tested. I fear for the worst, but also get your popcorn. This going to be good. We're waiting for players. We're getting everyone ready. The lights are coming on. This is round four of season six. The lights are out and away we go in Saudi Arabia. Charlie and Sonny leading us away as the pack comes towards that first corner. It's going to be a really low speed and a lot oh. of drivers going too wide. We've got Ferrari off to the side already. Uh, we've got Marta in the McLaren struggling to make it back onto the track, having to use that runoff area. It's going to be really interesting to see how our drivers hold things. That's a McLaren and a Red Bull colliding. That oh. is going to be Marco falling way down the standings. A lot of issues like we saw in Baku Glen also at the back. We saw an issue there. We have the drivers settling into a bit of a train now. No more two wide round corners. A bit of a wide move by Blaze, but he's going to get back onto the track. Okay. It looks like Glenn and Maka are the disadvantaged ones there. Maka does appear to have full wing, but sometimes the damage is superficial and you can't see it in the game engine. Not great news for Maka or Glenn in that those first ones. Yeah, especially if you have uh, more than just front wing damage. Sometimes you have uh, parts of the sideboard or underfloor damage, and you cannot repair that one, and that will just uh, ruin your whole race. So I hope none of them had more than just front wing damage, uh, or not no front wing damage at all, uh, just a little bit of ego damage, and they can just recover well and go on to fight for the positions again get back into it. Uh, we've got Envy making maybe an early move on Impress. Uh, we've got no DRS yet, but ERS could work. Impress holding the inside for that final corner. I don't think there's enough space. Envy making the soft tires last as Sunny takes the lead around lap one. One thing, two, three, three, three. That's going to be the later. But great to see him overtake Charlie, who was on pole at the start. Having that left angle was great for Sunny. And Charlie's going to, I'm sure, have a protracted battle with him around the circuit. Yeah, I mean, um, we can already see both of them already forming a one second gap to Gaben. Um, Gaben obviously wanted to stay inside the one second, so when DRS opens up, he also has a shot uh, uh, to fight for that. And as I say, that he's just under second, so barely on that one second. So um, maybe can be an issue for Charlie as well. Um, but Charlie is still very, very close to Sunny. Obviously, doesn't want to give up the first position that easily. He's like, I, I did the first place, and I want to finish first place, and we're not gonna have it that easy here. Um, but unfortunately, he doesn't have a teammate that he can work with. Sunny does. Uh, it will be interesting to see what both of them will pull out, not only in terms of on the race, but maybe even strategy-wise. Yeah, not sure if that was a little boot in the wall by Charlie. Then he is getting. Um, it did look like he was oh. getting over. I'm not sure if this is a game issue, but he has now dropped behind Gaben. Charlie does have a history of PC issues, so uh, we, we stand by as Charlie drops down the, the grid a bit. The Scandinavian Aston Martin team are taking the first two positions at the moment, going in E3. Uh, Soon he's setting the fastest lap to be eclipsed by his teammate Gaben. Uh, we saw Glenn with a nice little pass on Impress further back, and Maka is going to repeat that as well, getting ahead of him on the final couple of corners. So uh, a couple of nice passes as Impress is going to go into the box right now. Um, this is very, very unfortunate for Charlie. Um, he drops down to P6. Um, it's sad at the bottom, Charlie left the session. Uh, not sure if he has technical issues again, but that would be really frustrating. Um, but yeah, he dropping to P9 even now. So... <sighs> 
sad sad times for him because even if he comes back now, he even dropping to P10. Um, it would be very, very difficult for him to make up all these positions, especially because uh, Sunny and Gaben are not just any drivers. Um, they're the drivers that you want to fight for P1. Yeah, Charlie is going to put his head in his hands if he looks back on this one later. Um, I, I think it's just a, a B, VL balance lever. The gods are intervening and saying we can't have Charlie get too far ahead this early in the season. Mm. Sucks for him, but it's the, the phrase goes like this in the uh, ancient circles of F1. Free position gang rise up. Everyone is going to love the fact that they can get one position out. And Sunny and Gaben are going to love the fact that they've been given one too. Dorman getting into a provisional podium position. Way too early to talk about that at the moment. And uh, some throw at hands because of position. So really nice news for those guys. Uh, Hodgson able to get ahead of everyone. A lot of people overtaking Charlie, dropping back almost to the back of the grid. The bot is obviously not as fast as human input, but it's, um, yeah, really does suck. Charlie, it looks like he has regained control of the car, and that fastest lap is going to confirm that for us. On the medium tyres, he is going to be down the inside, and he now has almost the entire grid to make back up. Um, this game is just. Oh man. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, we, not only that, but the game itself is, uh, as, as we love to see it, um, just... <clears throat> I was about to say a bad word again, I reminded myself. Um, but yeah, it's it's yeah, it's yeah, GG. Not looking good, especially when we're driving along with Glenn. Uh, the car of Mecca going inside and forward. <clears throat> well, interesting things are happening on screen right now. <laughs> Yeah, it, it would be absolutely a really swag move for Charlie to drop down and then regain first, but we're way too premature for that at the moment. Monty's getting really close to Hodge as we go around sector three. Uh, that's normally the exciting bit of the track. Normally this bit after the left-hand chicane is where the best overtakes can be made. Monty has the better exit speed on Hodgson and has the DRS on him as well. So I want to see whether he can make the move coming towards the final corner. Hodge holding the inside for now. So Monty on the soft tyres, the faster tyres, is going to take the outside here. Hodge holding for now, Monty can look for the switchback and can look for the second DRS straight. They are back to back and this will result in a really nice battle coming towards the Ooh. breaking zone. And what, Monty with the advantage, straight line speed coming in. Franklin also in the battle, red, blue and yellow colliding. And Franklin and Hodgson oh. are going to touch tyres for the moment. Going too wide into sector one is not the tech, guys. This is going to be really close. Nothing to separate them. Hodge's virtual driver putting up his hand. It's not in victory. It's a gesture to say, do one, Franklin, as Franklin is going to follow Hodge around that sector one. Monty is going to be well clear of them both. Franklin with the tyre advantage might have a chance on Hodge here. Great exit and might get ahead for this left-hand turn. I mean, did Hodge leave the track and get an advantage here? That will be something probably just we'll have a look later on. Uh, it's looked like he cost uh, Franklin a little bit more than the time than he would have loved to uh, when he ran wide. But uh, obviously, soft tire is faster. Hodgson has to concede that position. Uh, but the next year, as I think Hodgson has the advantage because uh, next straight he will be having the DRS if Franklin doesn't pull out or does not have the DRS from Monty. Uh, Hodgson is not going to give that up uh, easily. Yeah, aerodynamic diff here. Uh, we're seeing two great chases here. Hodge chasing down Franklin. Charlie chasing down Blaze here. Hodge looks like to be the first one to make the move. So he takes the outside, just as Monty did to him on the previous lap. Franklin is looking for the inside on the apex. Moves over to the outside, manages to get that favorable position there. But the second DRS zone is going to go Hodge's way as well. He's going to do exactly what Monty did on the previous lap. See you later, my friend, says Hodgson, as he runs around the right-hand side. Charlie is at two positions back, and he's going to pass Blaze on the left-hand side of that home straight, getting the inside track onto that chicane. Great news for book for them as we see our first penalty of the night. Now all is going to get five seconds for speeding into the pit lane. Also, um, interesting to see Empress probably had an issue. Oh, well, we see Dorm in the facing the wrong way on the track. This could oh. be bad. He's almost on the racing line. Driver's going past him at over 100 miles an hour here. Dormin is... It's really shocking to see him turning around like that because Dormin showed a very high mastery of the track as we went through qualifying. I can only guess he's got a damaged wing or at least some sort of damaged body or floor. So he now has to go all the way around the track, get into the pits, 
I think a hard tyre or two sets of soft tyres is the legal way to finish the race here for Dorman. So that's a really big blow to a guy who's fighting as an absolute heavyweight amongst all these fighters. Yeah, and uh, to give, make it more painful, he was P3, if I recognize it correctly. So he was holding a podium position. Um, it looked like he didn't have any front wing damage, but uh, it's still something you don't want to see, especially not to a guy that showed that much pace and was in P3 holding it pretty well. Uh, yeah, also we're seeing Mancho going into the pits now. Is it not a little bit too early for the soft runners? Yeah, I would say so, Pyro. Normally you can get 10 laps out of the soft, 11 if you're feeling pushy. He's going on to mediums, which can't finish the race, so looking like a two stop, I'm guessing the wing damage must have forced it. We see Charlie going past Franklin as he continues his climb back up the grid. Charlie turns his attention to Hodgson, who is in P5. Yes. Charlie really making mincemeat of this sector three and going for Hodge here. Hodge is holding well, but it's going to be a real difference on exit speed as we get around this final chicane. Turn nine. Charlie has really done well here. Keeps just inside the apex. Turns on the DRS. Turns on the ERS. Looks at the inside pass. No tire diff, both on mediums. Charlie's made it happen. He's fought from P1 down to P12. He's back up to P5. Um, interesting to see what Mencho has as for strategy. Also, Charlie is not even that far off uh, the podium positions, or even Sunny to say. I mean, yes, it cost him um, a lot of time, but I think he's only about 12, 13 seconds, and that's not even a full pit stop. So he can technically still regain that fight for P1. It will be a lot harder than if he would have just stayed in second position, but sadly, we cannot influence what the game sometimes wants to do. Um, but maybe he's up there soon again. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in an allegation that maybe Aston Martin are tampering with uh, Zydox's computer. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it doesn't seem to have worked so far. Charlie's already in P5. He's got the DRS on Monty as we go down this home straight. He's gonna get himself into P4 and is now I would say 13, 14 seconds, exactly what Pyro just said, off of the front runner Sonny, who is currently just being chilling with his teammate Gaben as they go around the circuit. They are the flat track bullies. They're asking for everyone's lunch money. So far they've got it. Hodge is now within three tenths of Franklin as they're going to continue their battle. Franklin on the soft tires, which are wearing off. They're seven laps old. Hodge's mediums, just like we saw in the Styrian Grand Prix, are going to start getting the advantage. Um, Monty now was a three second time penalty. Oh no, Monty. Um, he's doing really, really well actually in P5. Uh, has Frankie behind him, but uh, as you said, the soft tires are starting now to fall off, and we potentially see some pit stops from the others as well. Um, maybe even some strategy, strategic battles uh, with pitting a little bit earlier or later than uh, you want to on these softs. But I think Monty and Franklin did really, really well on these on the softs and so forth. Yeah, the, uh, the long game of course is impressed because he's the only driver on hard tyres, he's dead last. He's shown a lot of uh, trouble with this track so far, it doesn't seem to be one of his more natural tracks. So he's got the ultimate long game where he can legally finish the race on these tyres. He can just wait for chaos ahead of him and advanced positions, but that's the absolute long shot right now. He's got so much ground to cover. I don't see him fighting for points just now. We've got uh, Mancho advancing on Glenn here. This is a uh, fight for P10. Glenn coming around the final corner to the left. Mancho does seem to have the jump on him there. Has the fresh mediums compared to Glenn's seven lap old softs. Glenn moving to the left to try and break the aerodynamic chain. However, Mancho is going to adjust and then move to the right for the attack. Does seem to have the advantage going into the corner and that is a clean overtake to Morgan Mancho. Yeah, I, I think uh, right now it's the time where the soft just start not to work anymore and the, and the mediums start to come alive. Um, so, and despite that uh, Mancho had the DRS, obviously uh, not much Glenn can do there. Uh, real quick, what I want to say about Impress one, he is really unfortunate, but I, like you said, he is on the hearts, and I mean, it is really, really bold to do that one. But I can, I think you can actually go to the end towards it with these hearts, especially if there's another safety car, then you, you're lucky because then he just pushed it uh, like I don't know how many crazy laps on the hearts. Um, but I think you can do it. I might be crazy, but I think you can do it. Oh, and we see Maka overtaking place here. Oh, yes. Let's go. Nice. Yeah, Good earlier move. than we see. 
Snoop's still with things. Mark could do really well from the club. Yeah, after his uh, unfortunate incident at turn one, he recovered really well. Um, but yeah, Blaze also on the soft, and I think it's just time for the soft runners to uh, maybe pit and think about the mediums or uh, other strategies, maybe soft, soft, medium, who knows? Yeah, the uh, optimal strategy certainly is soft, medium, one stop, 10 laps of softs, 15 laps of mediums, but Monty's going to make that move as we enter lap 10. He's completed nine laps on the softs. He's going for the undercut here. He got a three-second penalty earlier on, so he's looking for the stronger medium stint. I've been impressed with Monty so far. If he's planned this right, this should be his final stop of the race. Uh, in general, there's been a few incidents, a few pushes, a few spins like we've seen from Dorman and Charlie's PC issues, but I was totally expecting more safety cars. Uh, I thought this would be a, a race that was filled with collisions near DNFs and safety cars. The fact that we've had none so far is a credit to our drivers and also a big commentator's curse. No, my car. Another three second penalty. Oh no. Oh, not another. I think it's his first three second penalties, but I still hate to see it. Um, so far, we only have Franklin on from the top 10 that is on the soft still. Everybody else is on uh, medium. If I've seen it yeah, well said. The um, Glenn, Envy, and Franklin, three Project Ferrari drivers. In fact, all four Project Ferrari drivers. They're the only ones on softs at the moment. Uh, now we're of course forced with that early change. The other three, Glenn, Envy, and Franklin, still on the soft tires. I think this is the lap they wanna, you want to pit. They are not late with their pit stops, but provided they do it this lap, it should still be pretty good them up. Uh, Franklin in P5 at the moment, giving away a lot of track position at the pit, but he's going to have the slower tire as we come back out. So, um, it yeah, let's see what he does. Did you know the setup influences how much tire you're gonna use? I don't know what setup you always use, but my setups were always so aggressive, I could never let the tires uh, last more than they want, had to last. Like, if, if a soft tire should have lasted 10 laps, it was 9 to 10 laps, not more. Uh, who knows, maybe this Ferrari did a, did a setup that is a little bit more, le or less tire wearing, you know? Yeah, well said. I think you, Kali, and Trav were always the guys that could, uh have the most influence on tire wear. Uh, you could always like absolutely burn the tires. Trav was less aggressive and maybe it would lead to slower lap times, but he was always, a always able to make a tire compound last for a very long time. Uh, I, w I was never that good in terms of finesse and sort of managing tire wear because I'd just be driving the track and putting as much input in as I needed to. If it was aggressive, that was an accident. Speaking of, we've got a oh. spin. It's Maka and no. he's just been spun again. Oh. Oh, he's hit Norman no. and that's a DNF. That's going to be a drive through penalty for Maka, but it is the end of Dormin's race, and it is a safety car. Dormin's car is off to the left in Sector 2, and there we go. Commentator's curse strikes within one lap, exactly on cue. Dormin has had an absolute nightmare. He pogged qualifying, he smurfed it, he was top three, had an incident putting him down to like P13, and a spin from Maka has led to Dormin's direct collision with Maka's spun car, and that's going to be a drive through for Maka. A DNF for Dormin, less than halfway through the race, and a safety car, which has led to almost the top field pitting. They're changing from mediums onto softs, and given that the safety car is out for two or three laps, this may be peak strategy for Sonny and Gaben up front. Yes, um, they can hop onto the soft tires now, and uh, don't think they can go to the end, but they wanna maybe try to do towards go to the towards the end or even do a soft soft. Um, what I'm more interested in, yes, the likes of Glenn and Envy, they haven't pit at all, and they get a free pit stop under the safety car now. I think they're the one actually smurfing it, and maybe they even expected this one. Yeah, Project Ferrari in a really lucky position at the moment. They get to go onto the mediums, they get to complete a race on a one-stop strategy. And as you say, if the soft tyres don't last long enough, uh, we are going to be seeing 13 laps of the soft tyres. So there's the potential for the soft runners to come out, do two sort of slow laps under the safety car, but still have to run for 11 laps under that soft tyre. I reckon we'll be seeing the mediums have a real advantage towards the end. I don't see Glenn, Franklin or Envy come out um, contending for the top sort of three, five positions, but I think Glenn, Franklin and Envy have had the the best luck with the safety car timing. Uh, obviously the worst luck goes to Dominum Maka. 
Oh man, we, uh, I feel really sorry for Dorman. I, I he was probably just a bystander. Maka did a mistake. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Uh, unfortunate for him as well. Um, but Dorman probably didn't see it or didn't slow down as quickly as he liked to, and then probably just what well, was a bystander. Nothing you can really do about that one, and it's just more smash into a wall. Really oh. unfortunate. Oh man, Pyro I've just noticed as well. Maka started on the mediums, he hadn't hit it. So not only does he have a drive through after the safety car ends, he had to switch to hard tyres to make the car last to the end of the race. Oh no! He's also got a three second penalty on top of a drive through So this is like peak handicap 400 difficulty. It's, it's not looking great. I think Wilder may actually finish ahead of Maka here. I mean, this guy only has difficulty so far this season oh man it's so unfortunate he has the pace he he shows it every time in qualifying that he could be easily top five um but just it's always so unfortunate during the race that he either drops it himself or just is unlucky well, well i i don't know it's i hope it will settle down um after we did the start that he now has but yeah, I hope it's especially that he keeps his head down. And same with Dorman here, because um, he was doing a really, really great race, and uh, just unfortunate for him to, to DNF now. Yeah, Dorman, it's, he was holding up the Alpha Tauri banner because Miffy couldn't make it. Trav will be watching when he gets off the bus tonight, and he'll be, he'll be really annoyed at um, how fates have intervened to send this boy out the race. Uh, Trav and Red Bull's hopes now lie with Hodge and Mancho, their senior drivers. To be fair to them, they are in the top 10. They're in points positions. Uh, they look to have an all right strategy. Uh, obviously, the biggest question mark will be over soft tyre life as we approach those final two, three laps. But yeah, um, Trav can be pretty confident with his boys. They've definitely leveled up from Baku. Um, they, this circuit is definitely suiting them better than Baku. Although we are maybe set up to have a similar situation where a lot of the field are stacked together going into the final 10 laps. Oh man, I mean, currently we are looking, Monty is still on his two old lap, old uh, medium, Franklin on his one lap, Blaze on two laps, and everybody else on fresh tires, uh, mainly the soft from uh, in the top 10, and outside of the top 10 we also have some medium soft and obviously a mark on the heart. So it will be interesting to see if there's still some distance to go on this, and everything can happen. Um, but the interesting one here is going to be obviously Charlie because um, he's not back into the race. Uh, the safety car nullified the distance that Sonny and Gaben built up. Uh, he has something ahead of him, which is also not an easy driver to just get by. Um, but it will be interesting to see how Charlie will go on about that one. Yeah, Somfer has done really well so far. Not quite up to previous standards. Uh, in qualifying, you were sort of battling for P5, P6 rather than 3-4, but... Our World Drivers Championship leader, Somfer, I'm going to get that out while I can. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's going to be difficult to pass. Your right pyro, Charlie, is going to be right in with a shot of winning this race again. He's going to love the safety car. If you hear a fizzing sound, it's me opening a drink because I'm going to get settled in for this. This is going to be a really entertaining close to the, uh -huh. the uh, race. And I'm going to pass a drink to my production boy, still then later on. This, this one's for you. Cheers. The, um, yeah. there, are, there are 10 laps to go. The safety car is going to continue for another lap. So it came out on lap 12, it will extend to a third lap on lap 14. So I think the safety car will come in at the end of this lap regardless. The pack is together, so we're going to be seeing the poker game. Everyone sort of bluffing, the uh, the cycling sprint race, if you will. At the end, a Sunny leads out the pack and tries to bluff everyone. It's, it's going to be glorious. All right. Yeah, you both get a drink. Um... Uh, I've had mine earlier already, <laughs> um, but yeah, I I just love this. I mean, oh, where is, uh, I just thought somebody went wide uh, on the safety car. Uh, might have been that Santa was uh, for a short period of was second place. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see how the top four are gonna shape out, especially now that Charlie caught up. But I'm also interested to see what Monty is doing because Hodge obviously has a tired advantage, but Monty didn't drive badly either. Um, he Mo he's just holding down his P5 right now and driving his race really, really well. Uh, of course, given he had the tire advantage early on, um, but I mean, still impressive from him. 
Uh, we have Mancho and P8, who could also be a threat to Franklin, Hodgson, and Monty. Uh, we've seen he had sometimes pace and he's on the soft, so it's advantage uh, from him towards Franklin and Monty as well. Uh, it will be interesting to see what he can pull off. Yeah, looking at Charlie, he's, I would almost call him the favorite now, given the pace I've seen, but you, you just can't write off everyone else under the uh, un, under the fierce desert test of Saudi Arabia. We've got uh, Charlie on the soft tires. We're going to see the tire life battle later on, but for now those soft runners are going to be blitzing the way. See the confirmation that after three laps, the safety car will go in, which means it's not that deep, boys. It's just an 11 buffer as we go from lap 15 to the end, lap 25. And this very long circuit is the second longest circuit by distance in the Formula One calendar. Only Spa Francochamp in Belgium is longer. So that's why we haven't got as many laps as maybe you would see around the uh, 36 of Austria. Sonny is going to be crawling now. He's going to be going to a very slow pace, adjusting in fourth gear, waiting for the right moment, going around the apex. <sighs> And there we go. He's still not put the accelerator on. He's holding, waiting to give the signal to Gaben. He's still going slowly, not far to the line now. Uh -huh. He's going to have to do something here. So he's still weaving, backing the pack up. And he's gone. He's chosen this moment to accelerate. Something is going to be right on him. Glenn and Blaze have collided. There's penalties <laughs> everywhere. You love to see it, and it has to happen every race. Glenn may have an angle on him as we go into turn one here. Oh. He's going to come around the right-hand side, and Glenn not getting the attack at this point. Not sure if wing damage on our Ferrari cap in here, but we love to see that message. Charlie is going to be following Sonta like a core, watching him, matching him stride for stride, waiting for an opportunity to overtake when there is an opportunity under DRS. Or even earlier, Sonta not having the best exit speed out of that one. Charlie's ERS, Charlie's aerodynamics are going to put him in good stead for the inside line going into this corner. And Sonta is not an easy driver to get past, but I think Charlie's just done it. I yeah. may have just spoken too soon oh. though. is going to just get out from the right hand side using that last bit of acceleration. He's going to set himself in due course. Charlie is right behind him. This is so close as we see Mancho and uh, Franklin exchanging positions further back in the field. Charlie within a tenth still. He's right on the back of Sompa and they're about to break for a left hand corner. Sompa going right close to the apex. Sompa taking that better than Charlie to be honest. And he's going to get a little bit of a gap. But here come two really good sections for aer aerodynamics. Charlie out to the right, not hitting himself into the wall. Sompha still holding the inside line, but Charlie is going to be cleanly in front there. Sompha does not have a DRS switch back. Charlie takes third place. Yeah, and that was a nice move. Sompha also really, really nice defending. Um, towards the bottom, Hodgson overtook Monty really quickly, what was expected. Um, also uh Mancho overtaking Franklin, but Franklin's still fighting that one back and he actually is doing it right now. He actually got the position back. Really, really well played and why well, I say that while well, that also gains a position on Glenn. Really, really well. Uh so I think you might be right, maybe Glenn has an uh from wing damage as uh Blaze is P9 and Glenn dropped down to P eleven. Yeah, Glenn didn't really seem to have the fight in him in that battle with Wilder. Wilder doing really well on that home straight. On the right hand side, getting that speed out, fighting Glenn and winning that duel in the race for the breaking point of turn one. So yeah, Wilder advancing a position and into a points position as well, penalties to be confirmed. Blaze in P9 as well. It would be nice to see him add to his previous points total from Austria. But a long time to go yet. We've got nine laps to race. Charlie is now within DRS distance. When DRS comes back on next lap, of Gaben in P2. From there, it's 1.3 seconds for Sunny. And what a fight that would be to close off of Saudi Arabia. GP Charlie and Sunny, previous mercenary teammates. Charlie subbing in to be Sunny's number two in season five. Charlie winning qualifying, deservedly and decisively taking pole. I want to see that battle for P1. But first, he's got a Scandinavian to get past. It's Gaben. And Gaben has been on fire this entire evening. Yeah, and he's Sunny's teammate. He's not going to make this one easy. Um, he's going to fight it as much as he can. But with DRS now open, ooh, it looks like he goes on the outside. Um, yeah, a bit of contact there on the way round. Gaben continues to battle. He's marginally ahead. He's not gotten better at this one yet. We have a safety car. Second safety car of the race. We'll have a look at how that one happened. But we had Blaze crashing on the final corner. We also seem to have had Maka caught up as well because he's going into the pits early as well. Not sure if drive-through based, Brandon collision based, 
or anything else. But well, that's a safety car. I mean, uh, I hope Marquez not involved into that one. Um, but he's, I think, lucky that he can switch back to soft tires now that he doesn't have to enter stress on the on the hard compound and maybe uh, get get back into points position. I might have cursed him again, but uh, yeah. Obviously, it's gonna be a five pepper towards the end of this safety car, depending on how long the safety car stays out. And Charlie did not manage to get past uh, Gavin before the safety car came out. So that helps Gavin, uh, that helps Sunny a lot. And uh, are they fighting right now under safety car conditions? I think Charlie's just taken that position. Now, I don't know if the game allows him to do that normally. Gavin's gone right past, back, gone right back past him. So I think Charlie took the position, got a warning, and then had to give it back. I've seen some absolute dookiness, mainly from Carmen in previous seasons, um, about trying to get ahead of people while they're under warning for being too far back, which is technically legal. So Charlie, looking for every loophole he can, but given that Gaben hasn't crossed the, the Delta lap line yet, uh, he's not getting those prompts, so Charlie not getting those opportunities. I love the banter, I love the cheekiness. I've got to assume they're in the same call because they were last week. So I, I think that's just a bit of hilarity between drivers. Franklin taking the box, but realistically, taking a box at this point won't be the move for the soft drivers. The medium drivers might want to do it because we were talking after safety car one about the soft tire drivers not really having the chance to complete the race on uh, the normal tire life of the soft tires. This second safety car has given them a lease of life and it's been really good for them. Sonny, Gabe and Charlie Sumpha Hodgson are top five drivers, now can complete the race easily within the tire life. You're not going to burn your tires too hard on, on those safety car laps. Uh, lap 18 and maybe 19 with these pit stops is going to be covered by the safety car. So instead of racing 13 laps on the soft tires, it's, it's going to be like just eight laps of racing, five laps of safety car. That's well doable. Also, um, Glenn apparently had a uh, front wing, uh, he did the front wing change, so apparently had front wing damage. Uh, he would be probably happy about that he could do that under a safety car, so he might be back for a fight also. Um, interesting though is that Monty and Impress chose not to pit and stay out on the mediums. Everybody else has gone onto the softs, even Blaze who pitted onto the mediums in one lap went back into the pit and is now onto the softs. Yeah, that may be the call, to be honest, Pyro, because it's the game of track position versus fresh tyres. Monty and Impress will be on slightly worn mediums. They won't have the, the pace against the drivers behind them. Uh, not least Mancho and Wild are on slightly worn softs, and definitely not our bottom five drivers who are on fresh softs and will be beaning it out of the start of the safety car restart. The problem for them is it's really hard to overtake on Saudi Arabia. Only really Sector 3 has concrete overtaking opportunities. Maybe the end of Sector 1 and the start of Sector 2 as you go to that left facing hairpin. It's going to be tricky for anyone to overtake. So Monty and Impress, they're going to be banking on the fact that they will be slower, but they'll be a, just a giant rolling obstacle in the middle of the track that people won't overtake them. They'll have kept more positions that way than if they'd have gone in and fought from the back. And Monty at the moment, he's in points position. Bear in mind, Monty hasn't scored a point yet this season in three races. It'd be really great if he kept some points from this. It's, it's a really close fight. He's battling against some of the best drivers. Project Ferrari typically having it all to gain at the moment. Three of their drivers on the soft tire, fresh soft tire, looking to battle their way back up the grid. We're poised for a gripping finale at the top with the Scandinavian Aston Martin squad versus Zydox. Um, we're going to have a real good fight between Somtha, Hodge, Monty, Muncho and Wilder on the warm tyres with Impress looking to attack. And then we've got the fresher tyres towards the back, including Project Ferrari. The best battle I'm going to save for last pyro, Glenn and Blaze for P14. Nah. <laughs> yes, they're going to be close to each other again, especially during the safety car restart as well. I think this time around it's changed positions because um, on the first safety car it was Blaze then Glenn, now it's Glenn then Blaze. Um, it'll be interesting to see if there's going to be a collision again or how they will uh, fight this one out. I uh, hope it's going to be a clean fight though. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, also, um, which had. Uh, I really want to touch up on real quick is um, Franklin has gone completely under the radar. 
he did a really well race so far ha is currently p10 on fresh soft tires so and he has impress ahead of him on mediums uh he could also be a guy we maybe have to watch out as um he could also just roll past the likes of impress wilder i don't think mention but maybe monty as well and gain just two three positions if if nobody else just expects him you know and he showed that he can have the pace on this track it will be very interesting to see what he's capable of pulling off i think even the safety car is gonna go in yeah in the slide i was just about to say that one so it's a proper five pepper and i'm interested to see who wins this one especially who, who ends up where exactly on the grid yeah points are gonna be absolutely chaotic uh, as to how those battles resolve uh, Sonny's going to prepare the poker game. Yeah, Franklin flew well under the radar so far. He's the leader of the drivers that are on the fresh soft tyres. The back of the pack is totally stacked up as Sonny is going to try and bring everyone together. Going around that final turn, 27 to the left. Playing that uh, cycling individual sprint game of when you're going to unleash, when you're going to let slip the dogs of war. Still sort of undulating left to right, taking it chill. Backing up the entire pack. Sonny and Gaben have a Charlie to deal with. He's right behind them. Charlie actually goes into the back of Gaben. So maybe wing damage, we'll see. Sonny and Gaben are off. Charlie chasing them. Sontha let out the pack ahead. And Hodgson has gone right alongside Sontha. Oh. He was right alongside at the safety car. Has he fallen? Red Bull Verstappened everyone. He <laughs> takes that position. Monty and Mancho going for the position as they go into the exit of that chicane. Wilder and Impress following them. Frankly, oh. he's going to follow his teammate to the back. And that is Monty. It's horrible. He's no. at the back. He's had a spin or a collision. And that is going to be effectively all chance of points written off. Heartbreak for him. Charlie still fighting towards Gaben. He's within two tenths. This is going to be a protracted battle. As Sontha chases down Hodgson. He wants that position back. Impress and Wild are going to be fighting each other. Franklin going to take the position ahead of his teammate Nolo and have Impress in his sights. There's action everywhere, man. Yeah, and really unfortunate for Monty. I don't know what happened there, but uh, he drops out of the points. Um, but yeah, I'm really unfortunate. Uh, also, Gavin is already one second behind Sunny. Uh, Charlie is really, really close. We see Santa being really, really close for watching as well. Uh, so that fight certainly isn't over. But right now, I, I, I don't know where to look. Everybody is so close. Every, everywhere is a fighter. And the deer is not even activated yet. So it will be just who has the better exit, who can have the best straight line speed, I think. Santa is trying on the inside. Now on Hodgson. Can he make it stick? It looks like he makes it stick, but Hodgson now, maybe on the straight, trying to go back on Santa. Ah, he, without Diaz, I don't think it's possible. Oh, he does it, actually. Yep, similarly, Charlie looking for the move up ahead, taking the inside of turn two. Gaben's going to be right alongside him. They're too wide into sector one. These are two really good drivers as well. How are they going to deal with this one? Gaben has the only line. Charlie getting a three-second penalty from oh, being outside of those huge. limits. That is huge, and it's going to be Gaben taking the position and also the net extra three seconds. Fantastic race craft from Gaben. He was significantly alongside, and he was on the only possible racing line. Great news from him. Franklin going to be making a move on Impress here, it looks like. Has the tyre dip. Franklin on the left with the soft tyres, looking for that breaking point. Gets his line. Impress can't get past him on the way back. Franklin is going to hold his line into the right-hand side of the track. Impress dooting on the left-hand wall. Franklin is going to make that overtake happen. Yeah, no chance. He's on mediums and Franklin is on fresh soft. So, and here comes the three-second penalty as well, which uh, does not help him at all. Really, really unfortunate for him. But uh, at front, Charlie's still not giving up on Gavin here. Yeah, Charlie is going right for Gaben. We haven't got the RS yet. That will be on the next lap, starting lap 22 or 25. Charlie potentially looking for the inside, but he does a little fake, little faint move to the inside. Goes back to the aerodynamic racing line. Gaben going to be leading out Charlie. Two tenths in it. Still two tenths. It was the case halfway around the lap. The RS is enabled. 
Charlie looking around the left-hand side, taking the inside line, has the slipstream, looking for that breaking point. It's a carbon copy of the previous lap. Oh, Gaben, nice. in this time, it's Gaben who gets the three-second penalty. <laughs> Charlie taking the only available racing line. They're both fighting neck and neck, and they're now stacked in the timing positions. Sonny has a jump on Charlie of 1.7 seconds, but Gaben is not prepared for this battle to be over yet. He's going to keep fighting. Further back, we have Franklin in P8 at the moment, advancing on Wilder in P7. Maka has done really well so far, and he's got four laps to try and make a points position out of it. Glenn now sees Impress in his sights. Impress, a former Ferrari driver, and Glenn is going to try and get his old teammate back when the DRS comes in. Here it is, an Impress holding position for now. Yeah, currently we have the two McLaren close to each other. Um, Maka obviously on the subs as well. Uh, but Franklin is in a sandwich right now, in a McLaren sandwich. Uh, well in front of him, Maka behind him. Uh, Franklin obviously wants to overtake Wilder. He does go on the inside and he makes it stick. Gaben with another three seconds, by the way. Uh, so he's on six seconds. Yeah, Gaben at the moment, I think he's going full gambit mode. He's just drawing penalties just to try and wreck Charlie's chances of catching Sonny. Gaben is going full Valtteri Bottas mode, and I am here for it right now. I yeah. love Gaben's sense of teamwork here. He is just trying to back up Charlie and keep him in the fight. Sonny is lucky to have Gaben on his side. Zydox does not have a similar driver to call up in the case of Flyer, who isn't here this weekend. This is Team Diff right now. Gaben still trying to engage Charlie in that fight with DRS. We saw Franklin escape the orange marmalade sandwich, but only for a few turns, as Maka is going to be on his inside going into turn one and turn two. Franklin going to keep this up, they're going too wide. We've seen th this before, there's only room for one. This is Highlander rules, and Maka is going to take the racing line lead going into the first of three chicanes. Double Apex is coming in and Maka's gonna hold it going through. Franklin still has room to attack. He's in P8 at the moment. And not to forget, Maka still has a three second penalty, so that will drop him down uh, eventually, even to P10 if Glenn stays inside the three second. Yeah, well said, we've still got the effect of those penalties to come in. Um, most have uh, either no time penalty or three seconds. Gaben now picking up that extra up to six, but he is trying to stay within Charlie's range of the DRS, just trying to harry and harass him. He, uh, Gaben has used pretty much all of his battery and just wants to be within range. Gaben is going to still try and keep it with Charlie, has the aerodynamics coming into the final corner. He is really messing up Charlie here. Charlie cannot focus consistently on Sonny with Gaben trying to overtake him every corner. And this is beautiful news for Aston Martin. Hodge and Mancho are in P5 and P6 at the moment. Mancho getting the DRS toe off of Hodgson. Uh, Hodge still a few seconds back from Sonfa though, so uh, not great news there. Gaben passing Charlie on the inside. Gaben has, I would say, no hope of taking P2 at the end of the race, but Charlie has been absolutely messed up again. Sonny taking two seconds of a clear lead. Yeah, and I mean, Sonny loves this right now. He just, I mean, I would love my teammate at this point. Because, um, like you said, Ch Charlie can't just not put his foot down because he still has Gaben to worry about. And Gaben just stays inside that one second and just continuously is there, present, and costs him so much time. If they actually, uh, Charlie, when he's P2, uh, actually does go closer to Sunny, but as soon as Gaben tries to overtake him again, Sunny just has the clearance and goes up to two seconds again. Um, so well it's really really interesting like you said Gaben also uh probably will drop out of the podium so far uh what we see while they're going a bit too wide i don't like this one did did he write the wall um yeah. mr wilder but he has picked up an extra three seconds just like we've seen from oh. charlie at the top six seconds equalized gaben's harassment has worked charlie's tried everything to get in range of sunny who now has a 1.3 second advantage on track Six seconds in pens, Sonny. It's his race to lose as we see a yellow flag in sector two. It's unfortunately McLaren Orange, and we see Wilder have a nice reverse track coming in. Is he going to get in the way of Envy? Uh, Envy is going to pass Wilder pretty cleanly. So now we start our final lap. It's going to be lap 25 of 25 here in the Jeddah Cornish circuit. No more safety cars. It's going to be drama to the finish line. Sonny looks to have got this wrapped. Charlie looks to take position from Gaben because now this is a fight for position. Both have six seconds. Gaben looking to make it a one-two. 
as Suntha is just patiently waiting in P4. What a massive fight. Charlie looking for exit speed. He's run a bit wide and looks to have made it count, taking the inside from Gaben in the hairpin. Oh, and he goes on the inside and whoa, what a nice move. But Gaben is not giving that up. He's now on the inside, overtaking him again. Uh, oh, he looks so clean, but uh, Charlie stays ahead of him. Um, Impress one with a three second. Uh, we cannot see. Okay. Charlie stays ahead. He's even close to Sunny, but that does not end anymore because the six seconds will stick. Um, it's just now fighting for P2. Gaben is gaining and gaining, but I don't think it's close enough. Um, he still has a few corners to make up before okay, making this is the end. final few corners of the race. Sunny looking for victory here. McLaren on the track he has to avoid, but Sunny is going to come around that final corner. Respectful orange all the way. It's a god of honor for Sunny. Who goes oh. forward? There's only one tenth in it behind them. Sunny, Charlie, Gaben in a giant stack as they approach the finish line. And that is going to be Sunny showing us 25 seconds back on my timing stack. Well, that's not what I saw. Sunny won the race for me. And Charlie and Gaben almost too close to call behind them. Oh my god, what a photo finish at the end. I love this one. I like the game shit itself, but... Oh, fuck. I, I... <laughs> it didn't happen, though. I think we can warrant that reaction at seeing that timing stack. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh man, but this race is just... I mean, Maka also did it back to P7. Congrats to him. Unlucky for Wilder. Um, I think he... Yeah, he has a puncture. Okay, that's why. Um... Monty also really, really unfortunate. Finishing P14, he deserves more. Uh, the Franklin, P8, Glenn, P9, I think also now will P10. I think they did also very, very amazing. They uh, had luck with the safety car, but Glenn had a little bit unfortunate dude with Blaze, which cost him again a little bit of time. And all in all, an awesome race. Oh yes, look at him, Hodgson. He won a race in Austria. He's also going to take driver of the day here. And it is with a weird confusion that I report that Charlie wins the race, despite the fact that everything on my screen told me Sonny was going to win. Sonny had no penalties uh, compared to Charlie's six, uh, was clear at the line. Um, I, I'm pretty sure this will get reversed officially with the stewards. But yeah, uh, Charlie shown here with the, the winning animation. He's going to uncork that champagne and let it fly. Do it while you can, my friend. This is your moment in the sun, because I'm pretty sure that's going to get reversed. I want to say Charlie did get P2 at the line, though. I think he still got ahead of Gaben. That was a really solid fight. Both ended up level on penalties, so were fighting for position. But yeah, fantastic. Any, uh, any surprises for you, Pyro? Uh, either good or bad? Uh, who did well? Who did badly compared to expectations? Uh, well, I think it's... A fair fight, a fair race today. Um, no surprises really. Um, just unlucky for Dorman uh, because he could have been up there. Uh, unlucky for Charlie as well as the game just crashed. But all in all, an awesome race. No surprises, I feel like. I don't know if do you think there were any surprises? I mean, yeah, the, um, I, I think Dorman's is the big one for me. So Dorman was pogging it in quali, pogging it on the sweatboard. Uh, absolutely fell off in the race. Like, um, he, he really... I, I need to look more at the incidents, and I don't know if the stewards will be revisiting it. But yeah, Dormin for me was um, the big shock. I expected him to do better. He had an incident, I think, was connected to Maka halfway through the race. Um, he, he'd already had an incident in the first few laps, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not great news for him. Uh, Alpha Tauri were looking for better, even though they lost Miffy. Um, luckily, luckily, he does have 20 more races to come back. And yeah, Dormin showed his power even if he didn't come through with the points today. Yeah, I mean, what? what I don't. I don't know. I am I'm lost for words right now. I I, I love this photo finish. I I, I just want to have a you know a top view of 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 the end of, of the last lap uh, with Sunny, Gabe, and, and uh, Charlie all crossing the line. Oh, I would love that one now. Oh man, we, we, we're just uh, trying to get as much info from the uh, race director as we can. Um, yeah, we're, we're pretty sure that Charlie didn't in fact win, Charlie being Zydox. Uh, we're pretty sure Sonny won, he was ahead of the line, didn't have the pens.
but because we take our things very seriously here in VLF1 at the absolute contrast of coding codemasters in the game, uh, we do want to make sure we've got the correct result for you guys. So we'll get that through the stewards. Um, yeah, I'd, it was so close coming into the, those final few laps, and I thought Gaben was out of contention himself. The fact that he even got close to Charlie at the line was so good. I love the role he was playing because he used all of his battery early. He played the perfect teammate role, uh, absolutely fought tooth and nail with Charlie on every DRS zone, and it meant that Sonny could just get every advantage possible. Yeah, I mean, that's just a um, person for stopping in Abu Dhabi energy. That was full on. <laughs> I mean, just as we thought, okay, Charlie now has past Gavin, he's full on Sonny. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Gavin's like, wait a minute, uh, don't forget about me. Hello? You're not going to go away that easily. Yeah, well said. Uh, I'm just trying to get some of the uh, the, the reactions from in, uh, Racing General. Uh, Maka is apologizing to Dorman in chat, so it looks like there was a coming together between those two drivers. Uh, it, it does suck for Dorman, and of course, Maka had his race disrupted, had the drive through, had to switch to hards, uh, had the extra three second penalty as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, we've got people excitedly sharing screenshots as well. So, um, We've got Charlie and Sonny both claiming victory. <laughs> I mean, even more interesting, apparently Sonny had also a six-second penalty, which is... I, I, d I didn't know if he had actually a six-second penalty, but if he had, maybe Charlie's actually the winner now. Which, I mean... Oh, my God. So there's a lot of to change at the top, even. <laughs> just th that close. It was just that close. And I love it. Oh, uh, you, you love to see it. Um... Yeah, away, away from that top three, uh, if we take a look at uh, some, of, some of our other results. Uh, we had Mancho and Hodgson, so the Red Bull senior team, took home P5 and P6, according to the timing stack, which is going to get very heavily reviewed. Um, coming through for Red Bull, they were behind Somfer in Merck. They were ahead of Maka and McLaren, who got P7. So I really want to give a shout out to the Red Bull guys, who didn't have the best weekend coming through Baku. Um, if I take a look at the results... Uh, Mancho uh, got 13th in Baku, Hodge got P7, which were both sort of uh, downgrades on previous good results. But yeah, they both came through and got really consistent points. So um, yeah, well done to that team. Hodge also getting a driver of the day. Uh, nice little bit of consistency from them as well. Yeah. Uh, like you said, really, really well driven, especially from the midfield drivers as well. Um I mean, there's going to be a lot of penalties and uh, the stewards obviously have to look uh, over a lot of incidents. Um, but so uh, that's not the, the final results, but uh, the race in general, I mean, can, 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 do, I mean, yeah, it wasn't lucky for Charlie, but towards the end, do you wish for more action than this? I mean, there, there could be five drivers fighting for P1, but I feel like fighting two or three drivers fighting for P1 is also really awesome. I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. if it wasn't wearing Sunny, but that's, that's just personal. It, yeah, it's weird. As, as a neutral, I want to see the closest battling for P1. I want to see everything go to the wire. And I can't be disappointed with the way that Sunny, Charlie, and Gaben were just fighting tooth and nail last few laps. Um, for, as a neutral, I do want to see a couple more drivers get into it. It sucks to see Dorman and Maka uh, waylaid so much. Uh, it sucks to see Gaben having to use so much energy to sort of fight for his teammate instead of going for absolute position. But that's part of why Aston Martin are so strong right now. Um, yeah, I, I like seeing Mancho get uh, quite stratospheric as well. Uh, really nice move in from uh, Trav. Obviously, the those two drivers got a bit of scrutiny when they were moved ahead of Miffy into the senior Red Bull team. So, uh, yeah, nice to see that vindicated a bit. Uh, also, both Ferraris got into the points. Franklin got into P8. He's making himself a really consistent point scorer, to be honest, Franklin. He scored points in all four races so far. P8, P8, P6, P8 in that order. Uh, to have Glenn join him, that's two points finishes in a row for, for Glenn. So uh, great news for Ferrari, who had a lot of opposition, um, pulled out a really nice Q3 toe strategy, uh, did very well. Yes, I completely agree on that one. I mean, I have nothing else to add on this one. I think we have some interviews coming in, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, we'll get news on that as they appear. I, I think we've got um, almost a corralling happening. 
Um, we do actually have one waiting in the green room at the moment, so let, let's see if we can bring him in. Um, but, um, we, we can't at the moment, but we'll, we'll get him in when we get the chance. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to interview our Mercedes junior driver, uh, Somfer, at some point. Um, we'll, we'll just check, check to see if he's ready, but while we're doing that, let's preview his race. Came in as the uh, World Drivers' Championship leader with finishes of P6, P2, and P2 in the three races so far. Um, had quite um, an interesting chill experience because he wasn't involved in the fight at the front between Charlie, Sonny, and Gaben. Uh, however, he was very well clear of Mancho, Hodgson, Maka fighting behind him. Uh, managed to pull out the single stop strategy, so didn't have too much panicking in the way of the safety cars. Managed to make it work for him. And uh, we've actually got him in here now, so uh, going to say hi to Sumtha for the Mercedes senior team. Hello, my dog is also in the background. Two for one. Fantastic. Hey. I wouldn't call Blaze a dog. That's pretty BS. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Teamwork happens. You said um, it, not me. <laughs> implication, <laughs> my friend. So, uh, yeah, Sumpher, you finished P4 in that race. Yep. Uh, you got uh, 12 points. It's your fourth points so finish in a row. How many points? 12. Yeah, boy. Oh. It's your fourth points finish in a row. You're consistently getting those higher points. Just give us a shout. How, how was that race for you? Good? Bad? Ugly. Uh, race was good. Uh, I got a penalty early on, which is a bit disappointing, but it, al- it allowed me to like chill out a bit because the warning to reset, and it's like, okay, reset, let's go again. Yeah, um, definitely. We saw a lot of penalties early on, and yeah. uh, then we saw a lot of chaos as the safety car came in. How yes. how were your reactions to both safety cars? Were you you feeling the need to pit, or were you okay with your strategy? Um, so I pitted, I pitted for the first one, uh, and then I was pretty much locked in at that point. Um, a bit of a long stint with the softs, but we made it work in the end. I don't know. I don't know what my wear was at the end. Um, that was fine. A little bit of confusion around that first safety car because we thought it should have been coming in because everyone was caught up. But I believe Sonny dropped far enough back from the safety car, so it didn't come in. So a load of us kind of just assumed it was restarting. So kind of t- took the the last corner and the straight as it as it was. Would be in a restart, um, which led to a bit of a game bug with like Gaben somehow losing a position to me in the safety car. Um, but we resolved that. I then let him through, so no issues with that. Yeah, certainly a couple of bugs in, uh, in the game as they happened. We had uh, obviously a couple of bits of lag. We had uh, Zydox losing his connection early on yep. in the, the race. Uh, we had a, a couple of really close incidents. Uh, did you have any particularly spicy ones yourself, either duels or having to dodge a, a, um, a DNF con? Not really any duels. I had to dodge Dormin spin after turn uh, four, four or five. Um, he was just in the middle of a track, so I had to dodge that. Um, I had a couple of small battles, nothing major though. Um, but the last three laps were just me absolutely full sending it, trying to get three seconds clear of Mancho behind me. Um, because I had a three-second penalty and he didn't, so that was a that was a bit stressful. But the rest of it was just me trying to just chill out. I couldn't compete top three on pace at all, so I was just trying to chill out, maintain the gap behind me, and get to the end of the race without hitting a wall or spinning. And that's all you can do in some cases. You were clear of the heaviest battling in Baku, but you, um, and just like today in Jeddah, you made it happen. Kept the uh, pace strong, and if you can keep the pace strong and finish well doesn't matter how many fights you can get in. So fantastic work. We're, we're obviously having a lot of attention paid to our final timing stack later on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, P4 is a fairly safe call for you at the moment, getting those 12 points, coming away really, really strongly. Um, looking at the rest of your team, uh, you were the only driver to score points in Project Merc. Yep. Uh, have you had a chance to talk to them immediately post-race and get a, a few of their thoughts? Is there anything they feel they could have worked on particularly? Uh, I mean, I think... Impress was just suffering from lack of pace, I think, unfortunately. Um, and Brandon got caught in a couple of instances near the end of the race, um, which set him back out of points. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing in particular, just, just a bit of, bit of, uh, bit of bad luck. And, yeah. Yeah, definitely the potential. There's always another time. The uh, big takeaway, though, is that assuming the timing stack goes, as, goes in as it is now, with the exception of uh, the Sunny Charlie switch at the top, uh, we're going to put you into P2 in the World Drivers' Championship. Mm-hmm. You're going to end up on 56 points. Only Sunny will have more. 
uh, potentially on about 65. Yep. Um, yeah, how are you feeling? We talked to you a bit about the pre-show yesterday, uh, about how you felt a bit of a nosebleed being at the top of the championship. Um, still being in that top two, are you, are you still feeling the nosebleed, or are you thinking you can uh... keep, on, keep up the consistent points? No, well, I mean, I was going into this race, I was a bit like a bit well axed at the start because I finished seventh in qualifying, which um is not really matched what I've where I finished recently. So I was a bit more bit more chilled, a bit less pressure. But um we had a good start. Uh like Dorman span, which was unfortunate for him, but got free position out of it. So I think finishing fourth from seventh is you know it's I've got a bit more confidence in, in my race pace now. Um, and I know that even if I don't qualify near the top, and qual- yeah, if I don't qualify near the top, then I've still got the pace to, um, you know, gain some positions, but not quite enough to, to battle at the front quite yet. But um, if we're hovering around like third, fourth, that's where I'm aiming to be at the moment. Just keeping keeping consistent, get a good result next week, and uh, finish off with five finishes before the break, and then come back in the new year and carry on. Love it. Fantastic work, Sumter. Love to see you get the P4, keep up that consistency. Uh, any final words for the stream? Mm, nice no, safe to we start sunny. <laughs> Fantastic. Cheers, Sumter. Congrats Cheers, again guys. on the great finish. Uh, we're going to watch as Sumter gives us a wave and leaves the studio. And, uh... I'm waving. You can't, you can't hear it. But I am. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, a massively loud wave, deafening, in fact, mm-hmm. coming from the corner of the studio. As Sompha leaves, happy in this 12 points, doing really well. So yeah, Sompha absolutely smurfing it right now. Um, he's no longer the World Drivers' Championship leader, but getting into the top two, getting those consistent points finishers. Uh, yeah, fantastic work. Um, yeah, Pyro, how, what was your take on that? Do you think Sompha can fight for top two towards the end of the season? If you can't, where where is he going to go for? Sort of top five, top eight? Um, I mean, I can see him top three, top four. Uh, top two maybe a little bit too optimistic, uh, given that we have Sunny, Gaben, and uh, Charlie or Zydox. Um, I think there's gonna be either a fight between uh, Gaben and Sunny or Gaben and, and Zydox if Zydox PC or Game doesn't decide to just die. But I can see him in the top three or top four. Uh, as he's, I think, also up there, just uh, just a little bit, yeah, not as close. But I can see him, especially if he pulls out the consistency uh, like he's doing right now. So um, I can see him just staying there. Well, in which case, let's talk to the one guy who supplanted him in the World Drivers' Championship standings. Uh, officially second in the Grand Prix. Sonny, how are we feeling about that one? <laughs> Everything was scuffed. <laughs> it really was. It's worth saying that the um, the final timing stack had Charlie with a fastest lap of 1 minute 13, which is 17 seconds faster than everyone else. Yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's been really grinding that time. For, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been paying off. Yeah, really pulling in good laps 24 times and then breaking world records once. Yeah, you, you love to see it. Real talk, though, uh, you won today's race. I think everyone will agree with, with the fact that you won. How are you feeling in those last 10 laps? I was, I was shitting the bed when uh, the first safety car came out. Um, but we we went on the softs because we were thinking, oh, it's gonna go in lap fourteen, lap fifteen anyway, so it's gonna be normal race distance on the softs. Sa- a second safety car came out. I was shitting myself even more. Uh, but then Gaben just absolutely smurfing it towards with a fight uh, with Sidox. Yeah, I was I was going to come on to that a bit later because we saw on stream Gaben was pulling out all of his ERS, taking corner cut penalties when he could, and while he was fighting with Zydox over the DRS sections, you were pulling out that two second lead. So, uh, could you see sort of the big effort that Gaben was putting in towards helping you? Yeah, it's I um I would not have won if it weren't for Gaben and uh, Zydox's uh, PC issues. Which he was really complaining to me about uh, after the race. I won't, I won't. I won't go into detail, but there were some swear words. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you could have just gone back to him and said, "Didn't ask where's your race win." That I think you probably did. <laughs> I, I, I just said it doesn't matter how you start; it's how you finish. So <laughs> big end for you, my friend. End center car if statement gap. <laughs> you love to yes. see it. 
much. So yeah, f- fantastic work for you. A lot of people, especially on the pre-show, said that Charlie had that win, but it doesn't matter how you start, it's how you finish. You I'm got the win. Uh, I don't even know how the fastest lap's going to break down, but the one point doesn't really matter. The 25 does. It's going to put you to the top of the World Drivers' Championship standings. It's a position you're familiar with from last season because you won that championship. Do you think you can keep it from here on out? It's going to be tough, especially if uh, Charlie Sidox can keep up this pace that he has. Um, but I'll do my best. I'll have my comrade uh, Gaben to support me. And yeah. Take it race by race. Yeah, well said. You could, it's really hard to call something 20 races in the future, but in that close battle, it's it's really fun to watch it race by race. The one thing I wanted to ask you is, normally we're used to seeing you either smash qualifying or get a massive pace lead on the field. Uh, Zydox was just built different today. He was able to get those apexes really right, and he was able to smash the whole field by about half a second. Do you think that was just pace diff on this track, or is there some hidden tech that he's using? Uh, no, he, he loves this track. Um, it's the only thing he talks about, really. Um, <laughs> it's sad, but true. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he loves this track. He has he actually has esports pace, whether you like it or not. And it's just crazy. Oh, man. It's, uh, yeah, looking back at this race, it's... It's easy to see a world where Zydox could have won. I I, I have to go back to your catchphrase because it's so good. It it mattered where you finished. And if we ignore the uh, PC issues and the uh, incidents and the actual official timing stack at the end of the race, you took those 25 points home and won. You also beat Maka in Racing Rivals, so um Yeah, I I, I DM directly and like who oh he's he's Owen five now, so I just DM'd him Owen five who? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I think the league is much better for having your particular brand of BM in it. So it's <laughs> fantastic. So yeah, um, a race win, your second race win of the season, getting up to P1. It's looking fantastic, but as you've said, you've got a lot of good fights ahead. Uh, next week we go to Bahrain. Is that one of your tracks, or are you going to make it one of your tracks with 700 laps? Uh, definitely going to make it. Definitely not with 700 laps, but closer to maybe like 100 mark. Uh, try and put uh, the right amount of laps in so I don't overburn myself with the practice. Well, we're going to look forward to it in a week's time. Uh, Sonny, it's been great having you on the stream. Congrats on the win. Any final words for anyone who's watching? Um, that safety car restart was completely fine, by the way, Samtha. <laughs> Beautiful. Cheers, Sonny. He's going to wave a comparable vol- volume to Samtha as he leaves the studio in the other direction. I'm glad it's another direction, otherwise there'd be a fist fight in our studio and uh, <laughs> still Ben wouldn't be happy about that one. Pyro, it's, uh, it's been fantastic here at Saudi Arabia and it's been great having you on the, uh, on the desk and at the racetrack with me. Is there anything you, you want to shout out to the stream or any final observations before we close down for the week? No, just likewise, I enjoy casting with you and having you on the desk as well. I mean, it's been a pleasure as always. I can't wait for next weekend um, where we're going to be in Bahrain, not a street circuit. So maybe uh, more fights uh, with the drivers than uh, them against the wall. Um, And (laughs) well, I'm just happy that I was here today. And likewise... I'm sure everyone in the uh, viewer's booth would agree at the moment. So that was Saudi Arabia, and that was Sunny's win, despite what the timing stack says. Coming up next week, NSK Production will bring you more hard-hitting content in the form of Saturday 7pm, the Bahrain Grand Prix pre-show, uh, live with Blaze, myself, and guests. So we'll see what project captain we can bring in. That'll be live on twitch.tv slash blazehomewrecker. And that will be followed on Sunday at 6.45pm UK time, for what is going to be the final race of 2022 before our two-week break for Christmas. Uh, it's going to be the main event, the Round 5 Bahrain Grand Prix, quality in the race on the same night, every moment live as ever with our team, every lap here at twitch.tv slash official Valance League, and catch up on youtube.com slash official Valance League. Ladies, gentlemen, everyone else, thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of the night. From us here at NSK and VL, good night. Good night.